acting, in air quotes, my ex's mother's funeral and telling his children I'm carrying their sibling? It's got to be fake, right? It's a little messy. My ex's mother and I were very close. I knew her from long before I started seeing her son. I saw her as my own mother. Okay. Already weird. You're presenting this as if this is normal, but it is. This is very weird. <laughs> it's immediately, immediately strange. We kept close contact up until the end. When I found out she passed, I was devastated. Her funeral was yesterday. I went without receiving an invite. I didn't know you needed an invite to a funeral, but I guess this is important for later. If you didn't get it from the title, I'm pregnant with my ex's child. Unfortunate situation since he's back with his wife and things are tense. But that's the current situation. I was going there just for the funeral and to pay respect to an amazing woman who was treated me like her own child. I even sat at the back so as to avoid getting attention. However, attention came in his ex. My ex's wife came over to me saying I was not invited and crashing the funeral, so I must leave. Dude, they should have made a funeral crashers movie. They even have the arc from Wedding Crashers with Will Ferrell's character. Her boyfriend died in a hang gliding accident. Oh, I'm flying, I'm flying, I'm dead. <laughs> what an idiot. Oh, they do crash a funeral in Wedding. You're right. Okay, never mind. Sorry, sorry. Ma, the meatloaf. Oh, anyway, classic. Luckily, my ex's older brother intervened and said I was welcome. The only problem is that after this, he forced me to sit further in the front, literally put his arm around me and led me to the front, despite me saying I was fine to sit in the row reserved for family directly behind my ex, his wife, and their kids. While people were looking at the body, open casket, <laughs> their kids, <laughs> such an unnecessary detail. Her head wasn't crushed in it. She was sick, okay? She wasn't run over by like a steamroller or, or stabbed a lot, okay? A lot of people are saying that her head got crushed by a steamroller. But she just had, she, she, she died of a broken heart, actually. Oh, man. Well, people were looking at the body, open casket. Their kids saw me. They came to hug me and noticed my stomach was big, so asked if I was pregnant. Their mother butted in and make, made a snarky comment, like, yes, darlings, she just can't stop making them. Mind you, I only have one other child, so this comment was purely to make me sound like a loose woman. Me, when I see someone pregnant when they already have one kid? Ooh. <laughs> Yikes. Um, but still, I bit my tongue. The youngest then asked if the child will have my red hair and her... This is all going down at the funeral? It's, you gotta have some sense of uh, decorum. You don't just have, like, casual conversations. There's a service and, like, people speak. I don't understand. Some person that never met the deceased tells stories about their lives as if they were best friends, even though they don't know shit about them. Their mother overheard this and immediately called the kids back to her. I let, wait, oh, say, sorry. The youngest then asked if the kid will have my red hair, and the mother just scoffed and under her breath said something like, God forbid. So I was like, maybe, but your dad has brown hair, so the baby could look just like you guys since the baby would be their younger sister or brother. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, man. The most convoluted way to get to the, the punchline, but it's so good. I left as soon as the funeral was over. I got a call later that night from my ex saying, what the hell? Telling their kids about the baby without talking to them first. You told me, he told me to stay away from his family. Am I the asshole? Edit, there was no affair. They separated. We dated. They decided to get back together. We broke up. It's, it's, it's what's so hard about that? It's a simple four-step process. They... They separated, we dated, they decided to get back together, we broke up. In the meantime, we chose to have a kid together, or maybe there was an accident or something, I don't know. They both already knew about the pregnancy before the funeral. We were on a break! This, I'm not, 
giving this point, this post the time of day, okay? I'm, it's not real. And if it is real, it shouldn't be real. Your life is fucked up. You need to be an adult. It doesn't matter who's an asshole in this. You willfully got involved in this mess. You need to grow up and take some responsibility and not let this shit happen in your life ever again. This is crazy. This is, this is like a days of our lives plot. You just chill out. It, it, it doesn't... What, I don't know if they can do that in the law. Your Honor, a crime was committed and the judge is just like, yeah, but like, listen. <laughs> you both can't be held responsible for your actions. I'm rendering the verdict of innocent by criminal insanity. Not, or not criminally responsible due to reasons of insanity. Nobody's in the wrong in this situation because it was made up to begin with. Am I the asshole for not buying a lemonade for my pregnant wife? I love this one, man. Oh, here we go. Where it was going to be nice and fun to make fun of, and then all of a sudden it says she has diabetes, so now it's a more complicated situation that I can't just mock. That's not fair to me. Am I the asshole for reorganizing my library while pregnant and telling my in-laws my husband wouldn't help me? <laughs> What's that even mean? It's a little who asked right out of the gate, but like, Why is my camera up here, by the way? When did I move my camera back here? It's supposed to be down here. I've recently had an almost obsessive urge to reorganize everything in my home. Okay, it's a good start. My library is one of the places I felt needed to be changed ASAP, so I asked my husband multiple times if he would help me as my shelves are pretty high up and I have lots of books that are heavy to move. Hey, uh, hubby, I want to do something. Can you do it for me? I'm just saying... If you, if you get the urge, you should do the surge, too. Can we just buy, like, a ladder or something? Oh, she is pregnant. That's true. Okay, well, like, listen. <laughs> okay, she probably shouldn't be up on the ladder. Forgot about that part. But at the same time, if you got the urge to reorganize your library, sorry to Tobey Maguire you from Spider-Man 1, but I missed the part where that's my problem. I guess it's my problem because, you know, in this case, he... he he put the baby in her. But, like, still. He's probably got stuff to do. You don't have to act on the urge. Yeah. I'm going a little too far. But maybe. Let's see. Um, he kept telling me he would help me later as he was busy. Sorry, honey. I've got real stuff to do. I can't placate your urge right now. It felt like later was never coming, so finally I decided to just do it myself while my husband was working. My in-laws came to visit us. They walked in on me grabbing books from the higher shelves. They thought what I was doing was dangerous and I could have fallen. My husband also freaked out and kept telling me to get down, saying I shouldn't be carrying heavy things. My father-in-law asked me why I hadn't asked somebody else to move my books for me, and I told him I did ask my husband, but he wouldn't help me. He did try to correct them, saying he would help me later, but my parents told him off for not doing it for me. Bro, he's working. It's, this is a fucking false dilemma. I'm feeling for the guy Bigly here. Just because your husband wouldn't help you reorganize the library as quickly and urgently as you wanted doesn't mean you have no choice but to do something dangerous as a pregnant person. The, there is a third alternative, which is don't do that. It's not like she had no choice but to put things at risk. She was just, I mean, I hate to say it, but she was just bored. <laughs> just bored and a little bit, a little preg crazy, okay? It happens. Now you made him look bad in front of his parents. You made him look like a, like a bad spouse. They're speculating he's going to be a bad father, too, because he wouldn't immediately placate his wife's insane urge. He thinks I made him look bad to his parents and is upset I didn't correct him and because I didn't wait for him to help reorganize the library. We kept arguing because I told him that he didn't help and that I didn't want his help anymore and I would finish the library for myself. Lady, you got to recognize, listen, you know that scene in Knocked Up where Seth Rogen 
tells Catherine Heigold, fuck you, hormones. You're being a real bitch right now, hormones. That's... <laughs> I've never been pregnant. I would say is that if you have a craving for food, it can't be sated. Your husband should go out and get you a pickle and peanut butter sandwich or whatever. If you have an urge for the reorganize the library, can't you just watch Netflix? Like I, do, I just don't understand. Like, you got to acknowledge that you have some crazy thoughts. Like, what if she said, like, oh, I want to, like, uh, work on the engine of the car, honey. Can you work on the engine for me? And then he's like, I got something to do. She's like, well, I guess I got no choice but to do it myself. You, like, just don't understand why you got to... Like, she didn't have to do it. It's not an urge. Let's be honest. It's a want. I know about nesting, okay? You can nest, you can, you can clean, you can reorganize. Why you got to reorganize your damn library? None of y'all are going to be reading any books anytime soon. It's what to expect when you're expecting, and then like a 10-year dry spell where you read nothing at all because you got no fucking time. You don't need to reorganize your damn library. You need to shutter it. You need to repurpose it. I don't want to be the person in the comments that's telling a pregnant woman that they're an asshole, though. You're the asshole from your comments? It sounds like you admit your husband was, in fact, busy, but feel like he should have reprioritized to help you with the library, but it wasn't actually urgent. It was only urgent to you. If you were tired of waiting and wanted to do it yourself, that's fine, but going around and telling his parents he refused to help you was an asshole move. Are you suggesting over the course of two weeks he couldn't have found an hour or two here or there to help? Unlikely. Yeah, but, like, fucking... It's not his shit. I mean, <laughs> like, could he have found... It's not important. Thank I, I was struggling with the best way to say it civilly, but, like, it's fucking not important. You got other important shit to do. She's nesting? Okay, so what? Giga Chad, so what? But if she's like, she's like, oh, I'm nesting, can you put, like, the baby-proof locks on all the cabinets and stuff? Yeah, your ass has got to get on that. But if she's nesting and she's like, can you just do some busy work for me so I feel sated? That shit's, I'm not saying it's not on the to-do list, but it's dropping down to the damn bottom. We got a lot of other shit to do just to keep the damn trains running on time. Cleaning is busy work? This shit isn't, it isn't cleaning. It's reorganizing the library. Oh, the, uh, the books were in alphabetical order, which it was really easy to find them, but I would prefer to put them in uh, thematic order, like the Spotify recommendation engine. Couldn't you just organize all the shelves but the top? Like, I don't understand. Also, like, I hate to say it, but, you know, this is like your last gasp of freedom is like the... The second trimester. It's like the first trimester is like exciting. And then, you know, depending on the person, morning sickness, just I'm feeling unpleasant for a while. And then the second trimester is like, she's glowing. You know, everybody's like happy. You're buying baby stuff, getting everything like ready to go. And then the third trimester is like, get this shit out of me right now. Get it out. So like, why are you filling that that last golden period? And then and then the baby comes out and it's like, you know, you're in the shit again. You're in the gulag. But like you got that golden period. Why are you filling that with busy work, man? Reorganizing the library. I get that it's irrational, but still, like, you gotta cut him some damn slack. She's like, hey, can you change the baby's diaper? And he's like, oh, give me a minute, and then never comes back. Then sure, but like, you know, reorganizing the damn library? Like, I'm just going to, who asked? And who fucking cares? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she asked. Yeah, but like, why? Why asked? You know what I mean? 
She was, timeline matters. He said he'd do it. After two weeks, I would stop believing the help was coming. Yeah, because it's not, it's, it's a useless task. It's busy work. It's the word search in fourth grade when you finish your math sheet early. She was totally fine doing the work herself. It was everyone else who was freaking out. Yeah, because your ass could have fallen, dude. She's pregnant. <laughs> Bro. Bro, I was just lifting an atlas stone. Every, I didn't have a problem with lifting the atlas stone. Why is everyone looking at me like I'm crazy? I'm nesting. Anyway, he looked bad because he made himself look bad. I want to get, get a camera on your ass 48 hours, see all this shameful shit that you do. See, see how, many, how much time do you waste every day, you droll motherfucker? I know your ass is writing this post from the damn toilet right now. You've received 17 awards for this post. Your name is Supreme Court Just Ass. You got a damn, you got custom flair on Reddit. Your husband should really do more for you. Shut the fuck up. You don't know anything. You should always do something that someone asks you to do, even if it's fucking stupid. No, what his ass should have done the first time is said, no, I'm not going to do that because that seems like a waste of time. Instead, he tried to be a nice guy and say, yeah, I'll help you with it, but I'm a little busy right now, hoping that like in three days she would be moving on to the next insane thing and he would never have to do it because she would just be like, why did I ever want to do that in the first place? It looks beautiful as is. I think it's a waste of time. You just, you know, you kind of kick, kick, kick the can down the road until their desire disappears and then... You, when they're like, hey, can you help me get the groceries out of the car? You're like, absolutely, right now. Because that shit is actually like important and helpful. Anyway. <laughs> I don't think she's the asshole, by the way. Like, I don't... I mean, I think she should not have gotten on the ladder and done it herself. But, like, I don't think that makes her, like, a bad person. It's kind of fucked up that she did say she ratted him out to his parents, though. That's, that's a kind of a fucking no-go. I mean, she knew she was taking a shot at him. Whatever. Listen, I, I don't care. <laughs> I was going to go with not the asshole until you told his parents he wouldn't help you. Not that you wanted it done now and he wouldn't help right away you're not the asshole for wanting it done he's not the asshole for not doing it right away two weeks for a non-urgent task doesn't sound that long to me yeah it's it, I, I don't know josh I'm, I'm glad we're on the same page here i don't know if, if if i'm lazy i really don't think it's the case or if other people are naive selfishly i think that's definitely what's happening here i've had non-urgent tasks on my to-do list for like months because i'm like oh i'll get to that this weekend and then something fucking urgent comes up and I'm like, oh, well, I can't just delay this. I got to handle this right now. So you just keep pushing the stuff that doesn't matter until later and later. You want some spam? I would love some spam. Holy cow. Thank you. I must be doing something right. Can, you open this door? can I open the can? Yeah. I'll get to it. I'm busy right now. Oh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, Oh, did they have, have they been making these easier? That was like, that came off like Saran wrap. You're supposed to use a can opener for that. Yeah, well, check it out. I got one can opener right here. One can opener right here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, what was I saying? <laughs> Flex your head. Listen, I don't want to brag, and I don't know if you can see it with the lighting here. I've done the Peloton so much I, that I think I've had circulatory adaptation. I now have a permanently visible vein right here on my temple. That's how dick skin we're getting right now. And I all, when I get really mad, I get one like right here. But I also have like one vein i don't know i guess it's pumping blood to like my left eyeball because that's my good one <laughs> the right one is fucking decrepit like I, uh 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 anyway this one i'm like ah i can read it's my aorta you had that in the ring fit screenshot 
Yeah, but I had to really work for that one because I was, I mean, don't get me wrong, I was lifting heavy, but I was also like 5'10", 205. So I had good lifts, don't get me wrong, but like uh, this, uh, the body fat was higher than it needed to be. I was eating like half a jar of peanut butter at night just to stay alive. Yeah, da let's do it. Let's talk in the DMs, Dan. I would play some Warzone for sure. I was watching a little Warzone uh, this weekend and just hearing like the tunk. You know what I'm saying? Oh, why did he use one shot? You know what I mean? Kind of got me going a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I think we've, we've mined that one for like all it's worth. I do know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend not to swim in the morning? <clears throat> I did feel like the guy from Police Academy there. See, th listen, this is why they should not have the Reddit sidebar, dude. I'm just trying to insult other people in the way that they live their lives. And then, similar to this post, possible... GCS, look for Harley Quinn, taken, what even is this? So it's a photoshopped cosplay from the DC Cinematic Universe? From 2000, from March 2017. <laughs> what the hell? What the hell is GCS? It's got to be like Gotham City... I don't even want to continue with that. Anyway. <clears throat> Snoozers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snoozers. Sirens. Oh, did that become birds of prey, maybe? Anyway. We, 26 male and 23F, rent a place from her family. Said place has a swimming pool. We have a 2.5-year-old. My brother and his girlfriend are visiting. My girlfriend likes to swim in the morning from about 6 to 6.30, then from another... Then for another 10 to 15 minutes, she swims with our daughter because it's a good bonding experience as well as good exercise for both of them. We've never had any complaints from the neighbors. My girlfriend isn't exactly loud, but our daughter can be not every morning and as much noise as you'd expect from a toddler. Okay. My brother, brother's girlfriend asked if we'd stop this for just a while because they're staying due to noise and the fact that she's a light sleeper. Plus, my girlfriend spends every Sunday in the pool and she and my brother don't feel comfortable being around her in her swimming costume which is British for, like, a swimming pool, I think. Um, but then said, but the noise and not being able to sleep are important. She did ask very nicely. I joked, at least she's wearing a swimming costume while you're here. What the hell are you talking about? But I did ask, are you just putting this in here to be like, you're trying to get plus twos in the middle of your, uh, in the middle of your dilemma? Is that an aside? <laughs> You're trying out your stand-up routine and also getting couples therapy? I did ask my girlfriend about it because I know my brother's girlfriend has complained for a while about her sleeping problems. But my girlfriend said it's perfectly reasonable time, citing that she's silent till 6.30 and it's her house until the... So until... her And her house so until the neighbors complain. Am I... I th th this shit is psychically damaging. Every single post starts with me, number, my wife, number, her family, name, name, number, number. Our cousin, twice removed, name, number, was staying at our house. The down payment, 50% of the down payment was paid by her parents, age, number, uh, net worth. And then they start, then they're like at the end of it, they're like, am I the asshole? And I'm like, I don't know. The first two paragraphs turned my brain into fucking sludge. And then you're, then you're writing, there's typos, there's grammatical errors, there's misplaced commas, you got a semicolon in there just to, you know, prove that you know how to speak the English language. Like, it's too much, man. Can you just write, write a sensible element, a medium of communication? That's it. Can you just write a sentence that has an idea? I don't understand. But my girlfriend says it's a perfectly reasonable time, citing that she is silent till 6.30 and her house so until neighbors complain and her house dot, 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 so until neighbors complain dot, 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 editor's note and the, the neighbors complaining would mean that she would change her behavior. 
But I just think it's an easy request to maybe change it from 6 to 6.30 to 6.30 to 7 or something. Well, she's upset with me and things are tense, but I knew I, had I not asked things would be awkward with family over such a simple thing. <laughs> Listen. Get a life? Well, I don't know. I feel like if people are visiting your house, I mean, this is... Um, I am falling into the trap where I'm like, if a man did it, come on, oh, oh, big man can't just delay his swimming for an hour to let some people get some sleep, but because his girlfriend's doing it, I'm like, holy cow, she's girl bossing right now, like, let her go, dude, but I do sort of feel like if you're visiting someone's house, and they, like, you wake up at 6.30, because you have a kid, well, welcome to the fucking show, dummy. The, kid, the kid's going to be loud whether they're in the swimming pool or in the hallway right outside of your bedroom. So I don't really know what you want to do about this situation, honestly. Sorry, I've been yelling a lot, so I got a, a voice crack. I'm just seeing if I got some more water. I got a whole bottle, dude! Hold on. He's like... No, it's like this. Like this. Me when I get a bottle of water? It's the Yoda that talks like a normal Yoda, a normal person instead of a Yoda. I did point to the camera first. I don't know what's wrong with my brain. I'm not good with, with shapes. Anyway, I don't know. I kind of feel like they should just... I mean, you're staying in their house. If, they, if you go to a, someone's house and they have a toddler and you're like, hey, could you have your toddler keep it down then yeah you're kind of the asshole that's not a reasonable request it's like saying hey while we're here could you make gravity like a little less heavy it's not it's not realistic so like i don't know i also don't feel like if i let me rephrase i feel i feel like if they're like well we'll wake up at 6 30 instead of six they would be like no that's not enough these motherfuckers sound like they're sleeping until like nine, like degenerates, okay? So I think that, yeah, I think that you're kind of the asshole for passing that on to your girlfriend. Just a little, not like a lot, but just a little bit. I was going to go with not the asshole until you let us know the real reason was due to her swimming costume. Is this whole thing about she's wear, she has a, a, an obscene swimsuit? If they had just asked her to swim a bit later as to not wake them, then maybe it would have been nice to accommodate them since they weren't comfortable around her in her swimming costume. They can go stay somewhere else if that bothers them. What, what's, what is the costume? Is it Harley Quinn? From Gotham City Sirens? It's Bayonetta? It's a clown? Why do they care about the swimsuit? It's like going to the beach and saying, I feel comfortable because people wear swimsuits in the beach. Yo! Pog, Pog, Pog. Chat, check it out. We're not going to Tyler won this. What does Tyler want? He has a, a, a very famous clip where he holds up his pasta to the camera oh, and then it all slides off the plate. Oh, baby. Doesn't Josh hate spam? Josh, do you hate spam? I'd love to know. That's good stuff, man. That is good stuff. That is tasty. Sodium! Sodium! People would really be like, ooh, spam processed meat disgusting then when the little naruto fish cake is in their ramen they're like mm, nom, 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 mm. that's not processed meat uh that's naruto you know that shit is like a hundred thousand cuttlefish put in a grinder and then they extrude it out into like a paste with like a little food coloring making the damn spiral on it Listen, yes and? I'm just saying, don't insult spam if you like the Naruto.
I don't understand. I'm mad at this one. I'm just mad that he's so weird about his wife wearing a swimsuit. Why are they so weird? <laughs> I don't get it. I'm weird and I'm normal compared to the posts on Reddit. You've heard the thoughts that I have that just come out on the stream. It's not normal. And yet, I'm like a bastion of sanity compared to the people that are making these posts. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend she should give up on seafood because I'm allergic to it? I am allergic to seafood, and unfortunately, my girlfriend adores it. Ever since we got together about three years, she's made an effort to eat it as less as possible, which I appreciate. However, I wish she'd completely stop, to be honest. The other day, she went out with her friends at a restaurant. When she got back, I tried to kiss her, but she stopped me and told me she just ate seafood. I got a bit disappointed because I was looking forward to spending some time together with her, and I told her as much. And then I said that maybe it would be better if she just gave up seafood altogether. Listen. I know there was that story like 15 years ago about a guy ate a peanut butter sandwich and then kissed his girlfriend and then she died because she was allergic to peanuts. It, I, and unless I'm mistaken, I believe that it turned out that actually that is not what happened and her ass like ate the peanut butter sandwich. I think there was like a, we got clickbaited in real life. I'm not saying you couldn't be so allergic to something that if someone ate it and you kissed them hours later, you would suffer something but like it doesn't seem likely am i ignorant to say that is that <laughs> like his ass is like is like allergic allergic right in the, in this case right like that doesn't it it kind of doesn't make sense to me like, when he goes to his dentist, does he have to make sure that his dentist, like, has not cracked open some crab legs that, like, just before you get, just before you get into the gum work here, could you tell me if you've ever eaten a crawfish boil this week? Like, I just, I, because I'll be honest, if he's this allergic, then she should give up the seafood. Because it sounds like his ass is in peril. But I don't think he's that allergic because it shatters my worldview. Can you stop saying his ass slash her ass? <laughs> Sorry. Are you watching this with your, with your priest? I apologize. Anyway. I know she likes it, but sometimes it can be an inconvenience to me. He should not... Listen, he has a point. He has a point. That is not uh, the way you want to phrase this. You cannot use the word inconvenience and, and assume that it's going to strengthen your argument. I feel like she should be willing to give up such a small thing for us. Hey, listen, I'm not taking his side, necessarily, but it really is like a small thing. How often are you eating seafood? I love seafood. I probably eat seafood at most, like... I mean, if, if we're counting fish two times a week. If we're not counting fish twice a month, maybe? Of course you count fish. We're weird in North America. Some people are like, I love fish. Oh, what do you feel about uh, crab? Oh, I don't eat seafood. It's just... It, you gotta... I, I'm not... Uh, in endorsing it I just I grew up here and this is the way people talk about seafood for whatever reason or they'll be like I love fish and you'll be like oh what about uh, herring they're like nah too fishy <laughs> but I love I love salmon I love fish and chips I love like a filet of fish how do you feel about um, bass it's a little fishy for me mackerel mm, it's good. I think they feel like they cooked it wrong because it smells a little fishy She got upset by my request, said she loves me, but that she's sorry because she's not given up on eating it and that lowering the amount of time she does was already enough. I asked her, do you love me? She told me only part me. I only love my squid and my Cheddar Bay biscuits, hun. i I'm sorry. Her family eats seafood often. She grew up eating a lot of it, so I kind of get why it would be hard for her to give it up. But I think if she cared enough, she'd be willing to do it. So am I the asshole? 
I'm sorry to tell you this, sir. Your ass, your ass is inconvenient to be with. Which means, it doesn't mean the relationship is doomed. But it means you have to know your place a little bit. <laughs> so, everybody's got their problems. Kato, she talks about it on her stream all the time. She was talking about how, like, I didn't notice that my boot had dog poop on it. Even though the whole time I was driving home from the daycare, I was like, man, it really smells like dog shit in this car. Then when I got home, she's like, you got dog poop on your boot. And I was like, damn, now I get it. Like, my brain is its good in some ways and bad in other ways. So I try to make up for the penalties by amping up the benefits a little bit. You, you got to come to her with a compromise or something. I, I don't know. You got to do... <laughs> Sorry, I just saw Austin. It is shit. I can't. Uh, it's great. Austin, that is shit. Well, it was rather nutty. Sounds like she's already compromising. Yeah, like, listen, don't take this the wrong way. She chose. She chose the crab over you that night. And that's fine. Tomorrow night, you guys can have some fucking rotisserie chicken and go mmm, 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 mmm. Tonight, she said, give me the scallops. I want the scallops more than I, than I want the affection. Big whoop. Go cry about it. Sorry. <laughs> I don't think it makes you the asshole necessarily, but I do think you gotta, you know, like start living in the real world. Bro, if it's you versus scallops, I mean, you guys are going 12 rounds, okay? Some nights the scallops are gonna get, uh, they're gonna get a 9-8 from the judges. Sometimes you're gonna get a, uh, an 8-7, Okay. There's got to be some good ones, man. Am I the asshole for, giving my, for asking my son to give me his boss's number? Ooh. <laughs> oh, no, it's not about discipline. It's in case of an emergency. Okay, I thought it was like, my boss yelled at me, give me his number. That, that would have played to my biases for sure. Am I the asshole for not checking the scores of a certain NBA game on a three-hour flight for a passenger on an in-flight Wi-Fi I paid for? Planes are so funny. The smallest things become huge in the air. It's unbelievable. Hold on. It is a Larry David moment. I was on a three-hour flight on an airplane. Oh, what a relief. I thought he was on a damn dirigible. I didn't have any form of entertainment on me besides my phone, and you had to purchase Wi-Fi to use internet during the flight. Listen, I'm not even going to go into it. I'm not even old. You know how many flights I've taken where I just stared at the seat in front of me? It's weird because I know we were talking about like meditating earlier and I'm like, I can meditate for about 45 seconds and that's it. I've had a lot of flights, bus rides, train rides where I just like, just be like, and just kind of get lost. Read the in-flight magazine through like two times and then just be like, oh, we're here. So like you you tell I don't you don't have to justify buying the Wi-Fi. I'm just saying that the fact like you were like I have no choice but to buy the Wi-Fi is a little crazy. Your ass could just like sit there a little bit. It was eight ninety nine for the whole trip, so I decided to purchase it since I didn't want to be bored the entire trip. There was a passenger sitting next to me. He asked if I could check the score for a certain NBA game. Since I paid for the Wi-Fi, I should be able to use it however I want, so I said no. He wouldn't accept no for an answer and said it would take less than five seconds. I said, I don't care. You can buy Wi-Fi yourself if you want to know so badly. Would I be the asshole in this situation? Yeah, like, why are you being so weird? He can also be the asshole, but why are you being so weird? I just don't understand. He shouldn't feel like you have the, like he has the right to compel you to do something you don't want to do. But like, it honestly sounds like you want to invoice him for like the 17 cents worth of time it would spend to look it up. Like this guy, it, I know not everybody's brain works like this. 
But this guy basically said, do you want to be friends? And you said, why would I ever want that? Like, that's basically what happened here. He, it, he, he, he probably wanted to know the score of the basketball game because he had 100 bucks riding on it on DraftKings or whatever. That's beside the point. He offered you an olive branch. It basically said, it was like a rock, and unpainted on the rock, it said, basketball fan? And you said, get Ben. I spent $9. Hey, I'm paying $3 an hour for the Wi-Fi. And you think I should get out of my ivory tower and tell you the score of a basketball game? And then you made a post about it on Reddit later? It's just so weird. It's just strange. Everybody sucks here. We live in a society and the animals are leaving and... We live in a society where it is customary to extend small favors and courtesies to people if it will take us less than five seconds to do it. You should have just told him the score. He's also an asshole for not taking no for an answer. True. But let's find some crazy posts. I want to live in a world where strangers can ask simple favors and others are pleased to grant them. Well, within your rights to say no, but you're the asshole. Okay, yep, another, another sane head. Okay, another, another sane person. Can you tell me what time it is? I bought my own watch. If you want to know what time it is, go buy your own. There's people who think like that, unfortunately, I think. I hope it's not too many, but... Okay, you're the asshole and you're mean. You're weird. If the game had happened and you didn't check the score, I'd have said the asshole was happening. You're opening yourself up to check for it through the rest of the game for the rest of the flight or any other game. It's one of those if you give a mouse a cookie moments and if they're entitled enough to argue with a stranger about something they didn't pay for, they won't just ask once and leave it be. Now we're talking. <laughs> if you said yes to, to one thing... You're going to have to say yes to everything forever. Then you'd be the asshole. It's that classic tale of the bunny stealing out of the mailbox. Sorry, I can't resist the spam. The mouse needs ketamine nasal spray. True. I had something similar happen to me on a six-hour flight. A lady asked me to check the weather or something, and I agreed and thought it was all done. Then she kept asking me to look things up and would say, you looked it up for me before, it's just one thing, and wouldn't leave me alone for the next five hours. Listen, I'm not saying this shit didn't happen, but you need to, like, be nice, but also, like, grow a spine. Like, you need to be like, okay, there's the weather, and then maybe look up, like, one more thing and be like, oh, I'm sorry, I have to, some work to do. You just, like, tell a nice lie. And then go back to watching Netflix or something like that. And then if she's like, you're just watching Netflix, I thought you had work to do, you'd be like, oh, I'm a casting agent. And your ass just got blacklisted. And I don't work for the show, The Blacklist, so that's bad. You're never going to work in this town again. Plus two. <laughs> We're just like... Oh, can't you just look at it? It's a five-hour flight. Can't you just look up shit for like two minutes and then be like, oh, I'm really tired. <sighs> Pretend to be asleep a little bit? Like, this is... <laughs> I work at Netflix. I'm proof-watching the show. So true. You ever wonder how they get such good subtitles? That's me. Me repeating the character's dialogue to myself while I watch the Netflix show with subtitles off. I, I just can't believe... Some people take themselves so seriously, man. It's just like the, I'm the tiredest I've ever been in my whole life. Am I the asshole for telling my husband to get over himself? My husband has a 14-year-old daughter. Get over yourself! He's all, this, I can't stand this bozo.
This, is, this ad is speaking to me. Looking to change careers? The nine-month UBC Master of Management has dedicated coaches to help you plan your future. Really? <laughs> Listen, don't get me fucking started on the fact that this shit is, is advertising UBC with a photo of downtown Vancouver. False advertising. UBC campus is beautiful, but that shit is in Kitsilano. Don't show me a photo of downtown Vancouver and then a, tell me my ass ain't on the damn 99B line at 7 a.m. going out past uh, Pacific Spirit Park. It's, it, why was that picture so head-ass Ikea? <laughs> I still don't know what it means. Hold on, I'm going to eat like this whole piece of spam, honestly. Check out Rumbleverse real quick. Delicious. It's funny, because for spam, they broke the mold when they made it, because it's one of a kind. But they made the mold, because every single loaf looks exactly the same. I didn't know Vancouver had mountains like that. Bro, we are, we're, we're nestled. We're like, you know, you see the, it, it, Todd Howard loves Vancouver because you see those mountains there, you can climb them. You can, you can even see it for yourself. There's a little damn ski hill just above the uh, harbor center that's point, it's pointing right to it. That is what downtown Vancouver looks like. I, I'm not saying this wasn't photoshopped, but like it, 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 it might have been touched up, but they did not move the mountains closer. Let me put it that way. No, this is not my view. This is, this is the view Trainwrecks has. I look outside of my window. I see the dumpster that we saw in GeoGuessr that one time that says Joan Cusack on it for whatever reason. <laughs> that view happens like once every five years. No, it, happen we, it happens all the time. There are some times... Today it was very foggy. But even like after it rains, you get that view. And then there's some forest fires. You probably, we get that view, I would say, like 180 times a year, like 50% of the time. Don't insult us. It's, ve it's very scenic here. No, I promise it's beautiful. Fine, don't come here. Make it easier for me to go to the places I normally go to without having to trip over tourists who are taking a fucking selfie in the bike lane. Like, uh, bleh, it's me in front of a slightly tall building. Bleh. Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> what is this squeaks emo, man? 